History is being made at the University of Cambridge. The British institution has appointed its youngest black professor ever. 37-year-old Jason Arday will begin his new role there on Monday. The university currently only has five black professors. Professor Jason Arday joins us now to discuss. Uh, professor, first of all, thanks for being with us and congratulations. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me here. I'm unbelievably grateful and just really look forward to conversing with both of you. So let me just ask you, what's it feel like? I mean, you, you, it's always difficult with, with situations like this. You don't want to say, look, the hopes and dreams of an entire group of people are resting on your shoulders as you go forth into this new and unprecedented role. But how does it feel to be the youngest black person ever appointed to the professorship at the University of Cambridge? It's it's kind of twofold. I mean, it's 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 slightly celebratory, but actually, um, upon sitting or standing on a vista, one of the things that you want to be able to see is to look to your left and look to your right and see people that look like yourself and that, and that wide gambit of representation. And when you don't have that, it's actually not as celebratory as people would think. And so, really, it's a return to. Um, my original mission, which is really to engage in the redistribution and diversification of global academia, and in particular, UK higher education. So this is the aspect of your story that is just absolutely mind-blowing to me. Um, you have a form of autism. It's called global developmental delay. You did not speak until you were 11. You didn't read and write until you were 18. And so I found it so interesting that, and if, if people know, you know much about autism, that's, you know, often it has to do with how you interact with the world. Sometimes it, you don't interpret the world the way other people do. And one way of understanding the world is speaking. And if you can't do that, it also sort of limits you. I thought it was so fascinating that you chose sociology. I know you were not just a diagnosis, but do you think that factored in? Do you think that's part of the reason why sociology is so interesting to you? Yeah, I, I guess so. in many ways, um, it depends how people term and define things. So, you know, the paralysis of speech in, in, in my case, it was a blessing. You know, I, had a, I was very fortunate to have a fantastic mother who was able to get me to engage with the world in different ways through, you know, music, particularly song lyrics, you know, mm. which include engaging with Enya and kind of <laughs> use of sound to make them sense of things. And for me, it was an absolute blessing because it allowed me to observe, engage human interaction. And then I guess when you get to the point of 18 and, and I eventually learned to read and write, you're able to put those actions and those observations, you're able to mark them on the page and then they come to life. And for me, that was a really integral moment. And I, I, I guess I never saw any of it as a deficit mainly because my mother um, never spoke to me of me being disadvantaged in any way. She always said that I was blessed, I was very fortunate, and that I would go on and do great things. Now, I don't think any of us could have guessed we might get to this point, but if I've managed to achieve anything in my life, it's really because of the amazing people I had around me who um, really furnished the modest capabilities that I had. So uh, the next person I want to interview is your mom. Because <laughs> as, as I understand it, you have a, a whole family of brothers, and they're all successful. So she's, my, she's next on my list. <laughs> but, 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 you know, <laughs> Professor, it's such a beautiful sentiment that you're expressing there. And I love that. And I agree with Anne-Marie. We would love to talk to your mom. Uh, but let's talk about the people around you. Because oftentimes, the challenges that we face uh, under normal circumstances uh, not, uh, are not often internal, they're uh, external. They're the people that we interact with on a regular basis, other children in school, other adults. Um, what was that like growing up? Yeah, I mean, it was a very interesting experience. Um, if I'm being absolutely candid and, and honest, not many teachers at school had any belief in me, mm -hmm. you know, working with educational psychologists and behavioral therapists, they were very clear and very uh, robust in their argument and their assessment that I wouldn't, I would struggle in later life and I would need assisted living, mm. bearing in mind I, I wasn't able to speak and I was illiterate. So I think what is really important within that is the idea of um, instilling belief in people. And like I said, and I'll keep going back to this, I was very fortunate to have, you know, a wonderful mother and father as well and some fantastic people. You know, my, my mentor and tutor at college um, was outstanding. There were some key players in my early 20s who really gave me the sense of belief. And 
you know, all of that has really led to me being in a very fortunate position to be speaking to you now. You know, one of the things that your mom sort of recognized is that, and I guess the other people who sort of got you, was that there are different ways of learning. And not everyone sort of fits into that standard um, standard box. Now you are a teacher. Um, I, I'm wondering also if your approach towards teaching is impacted by your own journey. Yes, very much so. I mean, my whole thing is that there's a there's a whole lexicon, there's a whole vocabulary of ways to engage people pedagogically and. There are so many different ways in which people learn. And this is what I mean about not being able to speak. You know, it gave me the opportunity to observe human interaction and the power of language or um, the observation of kind of body cues and how people engage with one another. And actually, to draw on the work of um, Bell Hooks, who really is my heroine, you know, ideas around love, solidarity and understanding in constructing ideas around pedagogy have really been the axis upon which my praxis has spun throughout my academic career and my teaching, my professional teaching career. And that's what I've really tried to instill with students that I've worked with. Um, Professor Jason Arde, you are truly inspirational and incredibly fascinating. I was trying to think of like a good lyric to like wrap up this whole conversation with because I know you're into lyrics, <laughs> oh. but actually Vlad is the music guy oh, and I man. couldn't come up with anything. But I'm not just going to put you, no, I don't, I don't. Put you under pressure, but I, I, I just got to say, I'm really appreciative. We're really appreciative that you spent a little time with us. That's great. Thank you so much. Um, I'm so grateful uh, for your time and have a wonderful day. You too. Thank you. Thank you.